Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here, and I am so excited for this article. It's finally happening. They are revealing the first pieces of information about changes coming to Immortal Empires, things that are different, uh, starting here with start positions, which frankly I think is probably one of the most exciting things they're going to have to show us for Immortal Empires. One thing this article does confirm right at the start that I have to say I am so thankful for is that they are doing installments of Immortal Empire blogs and they're going to be focusing on start positions and using this to gradually reveal over the coming weeks where all of the favorite races are to begin their conquests of the world. And I am just so pleased about this because frankly, one of my biggest worries going into Immortal Empires was that they would not be properly covering it up to release, but that fear can now be put to rest because they, they need to build hype for it. They need to be doing what they can to put out articles, showing off all the changes, showing off all the exciting new things. That way people can talk about it and we can all chat about what we're most excited about, what we wanna do first. And it just really builds up the community's excitement for the game so that when Immortal Empires finally drops, you know, it'll be the gates bursting open, everyone just going out to have a really great time. So I am really, really excited to get into this and I'm not gonna waste too much time. Let's go ahead and just dive into the article. So what's in a starting position? As war hardened veterans, you're likely already aware that start positions are more than where your campaign begins. They set the tone for what you experience and the level of difficulty you'll encounter due to a variety of factors from the number of enemy factions surrounding your settlements to the availability of resources and type of terrain or corruption that envelops your land. While the start positions for most of our legendary lords will be unchanged in immortal empires, we've altered where 29 factions begin their journey based on a variety of factors. The key reasons for these changes, while some were made to be more lore friendly, awesome, add racial diversity to certain reasons, also awesome, or spice up your familiar battles, amazing, it's worth remembering that authenticity is key. So you won't be seeing any crazy or drastic changes, such as Carl Franz starting in the middle of the Lustria Bowl, even if that would be fun to watch. You know, I, 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 um, there has to be a mod that already does this, but it would be kind of funny to see a, mo a mode, um, probably best through a mod, but it would be a hilarious to see a mode introduced where you just pick your character and it just gives you a random start position and you just try to have, <laughs> you just have to deal with it. But uh, let's continue. So, a bustling battlefield. As you've no doubt gleaned from the banner image, there are few better races to kick off this set of reveals than the Empire! The poster boys of the original Total War Warhammer, the Empire is the largest and most important human race in the old world, don't tell Kislev, and has been fighting all forms of foul beasts encroaching upon its borders for millennia. Karl Franz. It wouldn't be the Empire without an Emperor. Karl Franz continues his ambitions to unite the Elector Counts from the starting settlement of Altdorf. Balthazar Gelt. The Supreme Patriarch of the Colleges of Magic continues his own fascination with alchemy from the starting settlement of Fyldorf. So he's where he was. Marcus Wolfhart. Leading his motley crew of warriors known as Wolfhart's Hunters, the Huntsmaster continues his expeditions within the danger dangerous jungles of Lustria, starting in the settlement of the Creeping Jungle, which I believe is a slight change, though with Lustria being redrawn, I am not 100% sure. And then Volkmar the Grim. The Grand Theogenist for the Church of Sigmar has abandoned the petty squabbles of the Elector Counts in favor of a zealous crusade within the Southern Realms. His starting settlement will be Sudenberg, where rumor has it he's hell-bent on finding certain dark artifacts. Oh, baby, look at that start position. Oh, that looks good. Okay, okay, so it looks like Wolfhart is maybe a little further north than he used to be. I think he used to be more like here-ish, a little closer to Slonhapek. Um, But, oh, man, this looks good. Oh. The Church of Sigmar. I I am so down for this. I I love that Sunberg finally has an Empire character. That is probably been I I always thought that maybe we'd get Kurt Helborg there, but just having a Empire character in Sunberg is nice, and that means we're gonna have Volkmar the Grim throwing down with the Tomb Kings, which is gonna be pretty hype. Also a fair amount of Lizardmen, um, Skaven, all sorts of stuff. 
To provide context for Warhammer 3 starting positions, we should also include the locations of the game's poster demons. That's right, the Hellspawn of the Chaos Gods will all enjoy new starting positions in Immortal Empires. Oh, oh, this looks really good. Nakari, defeated by the High Elves of Ultwan long ago, Nakari has returned to the Shrine of Kurnos, where he seeks his vengeance after waiting for an eternity. That is a huge fan request and a perfect, perfect start position for Nakari. That's going to, I feel like that's going to be pretty hard, but I'm really looking forward to that, especially because he can seduce human factions, elf factions, and beastmen. So, I mean, you're just surrounded by humans and elves. That, perfect. Great start position. Kairos Fate Weaver, the Oracle of Zinch has invaded from the Southern Wastes and conquered the Fortress of Dawn, though his designs are an unknowable as ever. Ooh, so we got Kairos Fate Weaver at the Fortress of Dawn, so the little island off the coast of uh, the Southlands. That's going to be a very interesting start position. Uh, Scarbrand, driven by his endless rage and bloodlust, Scarbrand rages war against the Savage Orcs in the Badlands, collecting and piling their skulls in Death Gorge. Perfect. That. So I've actually done a video talking about Death Gorge. Um, I, oh gosh, I think it was back during the Greenskin Q&A. And Death Gorge is literally like this endless fighting pit essentially, where greenskin tribes are constantly competing with each other to be the tribe that controls Death Gorge, which is obviously an orky way of saying Death Gorge, uh, because there's so much death, there's so much fighting there. And because so many greenskins are constantly going there and fighting and dying, there's basically these massive piles of loot, and that's what keeps drawing all the greenskins to it. It's not only the endless fighting, but because whoever controls Death Gorge has all these shiny bits, uh, you know, and you can get the best boss at and like all this armor and weapons and stuff. So it's constantly competed over uh, by all of the various factions. So Scarbrand manifesting in this place of like endless bloodshed makes perfect sense. And I cannot wait to see Scarbrand running around the Badlands just punching orcs in the face constantly. Uh, it's going to be really, really fun to face the uh, play the characters near him. Uh, because Scarbrand's got a pretty heavy amount of enemies, um, in that, uh, that initial ballpark. I mean, you got, like, Quick Headtaker's gonna be nearby, uh, Thoric Ironbrow's a little ways south, you got, like, Cetra the Imperishable is, like, right down here, uh, you're gonna have Kalita over here, Krokgar probably somewhere, uh, unless he's moved, uh, Wurzag should, will probably still be in Ekrin, we might still have Grimgor up here, uh, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, like, there's a lot of good baddies, um, that, they're not crazy close to him, but they're decently close to him, um, <laughs> I imagine if you're playing Malagor, you're gonna be like, let's go the other way, <laughs> not start a fight with the demons, but, uh, that's fantastic, I, Scarbrand throwing down in the Badlands, I think is perfect, Kugoth Plaguefather, Kugoth has sailed from the southern waste, drawn by the putrid sludge near the mouth of the river ruin, that is a, settling nearby in Dragonfang Mount within the Dragon Isles. So first of all, that's a really, really cool lore explanation of why Kugoth has crossed the Sea of Dread to the uh, the uh, Dragonfang Mount. Because, so the River Ruin is where, I, I think I can zoom in a little here. The River Ruin, uh, which is right here, the Mouth of Ruin, you can see is the name of this province, um, is where the uh, Chaos Dwarfs dump all of the, like, toxic waste and sludge and everything from their, uh, from the forges, um, most notably of Zarnagrund. Because Zarnagrund, the river ruin flows through it, and they dump all their refuse and stuff into there, and it flows all the way down and even picks up some other nastiness, uh, usually when it's passing um, near the, uh, the Black Fortress and the Tower of Gorgoth. So it is, it's a nasty, nasty thing when it finally reaches the ocean. So Kugoth being drawn to that, I think makes perfect sense because he could probably make some really nasty new plagues if he got his hands on that. And uh, Dragonfang Mount will be a nice start position for him because you've got that unique building there that I think everyone has access to um, that gives just a ton of money. So that'll be really cool, um, especially because with Kugoth, uh, the better economy you can have, the better. Uh, and then the Demon Prince. The Demon Prince moves to the Forest of Decay in the Northern Chaos Wastes, allowing him to compete for the ultimate leadership of chaos. I wonder what that means. I wonder, mm, I'm curious what that means. 
for for to say compete for the ultimate leadership i feel like that's implying he's going to be fighting for like i want to be the big boss in charge and when i think big bosses i think bellacor and archaon so maybe the ever chosen is somewhere here in the far north and so is bellacor uh, personally, I'm really hoping we get Bellicor in either Mordheim or Albion because those are kind of his two really, really famous um, locations for his story is that those are areas where he managed to manifest himself and become like a really big pain in the ass. But Archeon could show up damn near anywhere and it would be fine because Archeon has traveled the entire planet. So it'll be really interesting to see what they're going to do there. And uh, hmm, interesting. That's all the start positions we'll be unveiling today, but we'll be revealing the starting locations of all 86 lords on our social channels over the coming weeks. While some of these will have relatively minor but exciting changes like the Empire, others will see several factions jumping to entirely new pastures. And we have a list of everybody that is showing up. So next is Lizardmen, Norska, Kislev, High Elves, Bretonia, Grand Cathay, Skaven, Greenskins, Ogre Kingdoms, Beastmen, Tomb Kings, Wood Elves, Vampire Coast, Dwarfs, Dark Elves, Vampire Counts, and Warriors of Chaos. Now, if they're smart, they probably ordered this where the least exciting are at the top and the most exciting are at the bottom. Maybe they mixed it up a little bit, but I'm kind of expecting that as the further we go down the list, the more crazy and cool the changes are going to be. All right, next week we're offering an inside look at Bellacore and the other new dedicated factions coming to Immortal Empires. Ooh, dedicated factions. When they say dedicated factions, I wonder if they're talking about the DLC or if they're talking about... I wonder what they're talking about. That that sounds like they're talking about the Champions DLC because everything I've seen keeps... They, they There was an interview recently with uh, Rich Aldridge where he made like another pun or something about chaos and I, I feel rather the community is very much you know settled on the idea that we're, we're looking at um warrior of chaos characters that are mono god oriented so uh, i may i'm wondering if that's what they're going to talk about next week um i i would not be against that i would love that reveal um but that, that seems like a weird thing to hint towards but i am very excited to see bellacor i will say i am I am really, really hoping that Bellacor will be the second Demons of Chaos character because I love the Demons of Chaos, but I would very much like to play them without Prince Yuri. You know, I, I would love to play them with a traditional character, with a traditional tech tree, with access to unholy manifestations, um, you know, and, you know, be really focusing on that pure demon goodness. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but overall, I, I'm extremely happy with this article. Um, this is a fantastic first showing. Um, the, the, demon, the, the demon factions, I am so pleased. I am so pleased. The, the Kugoth surprised me. I Personally, I think I was expecting Kugoth to remain relatively the same. Um, to stay up near like the Bloated Marshes or Skull Road or something. Um... That being said, I, I like that start position a lot. And I, I well, I'll, let me just talk about all of them real quick. Um, obviously, the ones that haven't changed, totally fine. Uh, I think uh, Gelt, Franz, and Wolfhart all have excellent start positions. They offer very good campaigns. Uh, you know, Gelt, you're, you tend to be much more focused on dealing with the vampire counts and the threats from the border princes in the south and working a lot with the dwarfs or fighting the dwarves, depending on how you play your campaign. Whereas Franz, you're more focused on the empire as a whole. And now that Kislev is in the race as well, I'm imagining there's going to be some pretty interesting diplomacy and gameplay. Dude, could you imagine the like how fun the co-op's going to be for this? Of just being, oh, you know, if it, like even if you did a pure empire playthrough, if you got four buddies together and y'all were playing Wolfheart, Franz, Gelt and Volkmar like you could you have an incredible amount of stuff you can do and um but these three still look great uh, you know Franz is focused mostly on the Empire but you're gonna have a lot more cool stuff to do 
with Kislev now in the running because there's going to be like a whole new race to negotiate with and be doing all that stuff. And then uh, obviously uh, Volkmar is just a brand new campaign. He finally has his own faction. Uh, he finally has, uh, and they 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 hint. What did they say? Rumor has it he's hell bent on finding certain dark artifacts. So, hmm, for for ne uh for the Southlands or because he's like right on the edge. He's not in the land of the dead. He's he's a little bit outside the land of the dead because he's near Sudenberg, which Sudenberg is kind of like a. It belongs to the Empire, but it's more of a penal colony or, or somewhere you send people you don't like and or a place for really adventurous or desperate people to go. It is not like a particularly super crazy wealthy place, um, especially because they have to deal with like Arabian pirates and the pirates of Sartosa and all this other stuff. Like it's 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 a dangerous place to get to, but I'm I'm assuming they say dark artifacts that could be chaos but it also could be undead um he is very close to the black pyramid of nagash so it could be that maybe you're trying to like stop nagash's resurrection perhaps or maybe like because that would play very heavily into volkmar's storyline because for those unaware uh volkmar got done pretty dirty by games workshop and during the end times he gets captured by Manfred von Karstein and ends up being used in a ritual by Archon the Black to resurrect Nagash. And not only does he die, but he doesn't really get to die in a good way. He like gets one of his arms chopped off and has Nagash's claw like put into where his arm was so that he has Nagash's arm. And then he has like the crown of sorcery. Like he has all of Nagash's artifact put on him. Um, and he is like horribly and painfully transmuted essentially into Nagash. Like the, the new Nagash that has the really badass model, the like 12 foot or like the 15 to 20 foot tall skeleton God that is running around kicking everybody's ass and stuff. That's literally Volkmar's body but just horribly transmuted into Nagash's own image, um, which is pretty horrific. And Volkmar did not deserve that. Uh, there there are some characters I could have seen that in for, but Volkmar really did not deserve to go down like that. So it could be that maybe they've made a storyline where you get to prevent that from happening by using Volkmar himself. So instead of getting captured at the end of Sigmar's blood, you instead get to fight back against Archon the Black and his cronies and uh, go around like trying to smash Nagash's stuff to prevent him from coming back instead of being forced to become Nagash and dying horribly. Um, either way, I'm really, really looking forward to Volkmar's campaign. That's going to be super exciting. Volkmar's always been a really good character in Total War. Like he's always been pretty strong. Um, like in multiplayer, he's super popular, at least in, at the end of Warhammer 2. But, uh, you know, his campaign was always definitely a bit of a letdown because, you know, him and Franz were in the exact same spot. Especially because there was no unique building for him in Altor for anything. Like, you couldn't build the great Cath the Grand Cathedral of Sigmar. Like, you just, there wasn't a lot you could do. So, I'm really excited to see that he's finally getting his own billing. And then for the demon characters, uh, personally, I'm super incredibly satisfied. Uh, I think Prince Yuri, having retreated to the far distant north to really make a name for himself and to start gathering followers and power, that makes way more sense, him retreating all the way to the Chaos Waste. Because you know that Katarin, like the second she would have found out about him, the Kislevites would have been like, that guy needs to die. Like, he needs to go down. So he would have need to run really far away. Like, and plus, he was transformed to a demon prince in the Chaos Waste. Like, I'm, I'm not 100% sure if this is close to where he actually was. Um, presumably, in the storyline, he went more like this way. Like, he, he went up the Skull Road and then either made it to the Blood Marshes or Bloodfire Falls. But um, he went up, like, somewhere around here, I think. But then he gets blown up when Urson roars and literally hurled, like, way the hell, you know, somewhere... So this presumably could very well be where he essentially landed and ascended into Demon Princehood. Um, 
and is now trying to build a base and, you know, get set up and uh, uh, really get the approval of the dark powers and everything. So I think that's a perfect starting place for the Demon Prince. Um, and then Kugoth, we already talked about it. Um, he's going to be in like the, the jungles of the Dragon Isles, which I think is a very excellent starting place for him. The, the whole justification of the River Ruin, I think is great. Uh, jungle provinces for Nurgle to me makes perfect sense because jungles have really gnarly, terrifying diseases, uh, uh, which I've, I've seen firsthand. My, my sister got a really nasty, uh, jungle disease once, uh, when she was traveling around Southeast Asia. Um, and so like Nurgle having a big bad in the jungles. Yeah. Okay. That makes perfect sense to me. And the other thing I really like is he's so close to the dwarf empire. Um, obviously there are some places you could have put him where he'd be closer, but he's only like maybe four or five provinces away from getting into the world or well, actually one, two, he's only like three provinces away really from entering the world's edge mountains and being able to throw down with the dwarfs. And if Emmerich and the, his starting dwarf enemies are still here from Warhammer two, he's going to have, um, dwarfs very, very close. So I do very much like that he's able to kind of come up and just start killing dwarfs, uh, especially because I heavily suggest or imagine that Kugoth probably does not care very much about the difference between dwarfs and chaos dwarfs. He just hates dwarfs. So <laughs> for him, um, I think he is just as happy to screw with the sons of Zar as he is to screw with the, uh, the, the children of the ancestor gods. So Kugoth is going to, you know, he's going to have his job cut out for him, smashing Dawi left and right. And then um, Scarbrand, we, we talked about a lot. Star position is perfect. I think Scarbrand going up against orcs primarily, or savage orcs primarily at the beginning, and then he starts to fight like tomb kings and skaven and all this other, and dwarfs. Uh, I think that's absolutely perfect. Um, really, the only... The best book we have that is about Scarbrand, or not about Scarbrand, but includes Scarbrand, is the Thankwell's Doom, which Thankwell's Doom literally revolves around when Thankwell accidentally summons Scarbrand into a uh, into a fight between the Skaven and the Dwarfs at a at a Dwarf hold. So him appearing in the Badlands and his like kind of primary opponents revolving very heavily around Dwarfs, Greenskins, and Skaven, I think is super perfect for him and fits his narrative really well. And it, it's a, it's a good callback to the time he think will accidentally popped him into existence. Um, and he's going to have a great time just fighting people that really like to fight, you know, just people screaming a wah. And, uh, you know, honestly, I think for Greenskins, fighting corn is going to be extremely fun because you're just running at each other to go smash the hell out of one another. I, I kind of feel the same way about like, Nurgle and vampire counts. I feel like those two are going to be really natural enemies that it's going to be fun because you have this like super gr these similar, but different, very grindy play styles fighting against one another. Uh, and then we have Zinch in the far South, um, on the Island, the fortress of Dawn. So presumably he's going to be finishing off some high elf leftovers that are around here. Uh, and then I imagine he's going to be, uh, mostly fighting the lizard men, which for Kairos is perfect. Uh, Kairos fate weaver was, his like big job during the great cataclysm was that he led the invasion of Lustria. He led the invasion that like mo for the most part broke the Lizardman empire. So he's got an ax to grind against the Lizardman and uh, they have a big ax to grind against him. So I think that's a super cool start position for him and he can just immediately start uh, fighting with the elves and the Lizardmen down here. And of course he does have very easy access to the Southern Chaos Waste. I'm really curious what's gonna be going on in the Southern Chaos Waste, uh, because there's there's certainly a lot of different races you could put there. You could put demons, you could put beastmen, uh, you could put uh, Warriors of Chaos, you could put like maybe pseudo Norskins of some kind. So uh, any of those would be really interesting. I Because it's like actual waste, I imagine it'll be between like probably demons and beastmen. But um, having easy access to that also gives him like really chaotic, you know, environment to expand to. So you could decide, you know, do you want to go south and maybe take over some easier territory? Or do you want to go north and start fighting all these nerds? Um, and then uh, last but not least, Nakari, I shouldn't have to say anything. Um, Nakari has an entire book, uh, thanks to the Tyrion to Tekla series, 
Um, actually, no, he has multiple books that are about him fighting Tyrion and Teclas in Ulthuan. He is, if you include the end times, Nakari has invaded Ulthuan three freaking times, which is crazy crazy he invaded it once when they were kids and he wiped out the line of anarian with only like a very few number of survivors then he inv uh then uh malekith summoned him and basically not imprisoned him but um enslaved him i guess you could say and used him as basically like a hunting dog to try and kill alariel and Tyrion, which he nearly succeeded uh, and the wood elves even got involved that time and then the third time he invaded Ulthuan during the end times where he was finally killed um, for realsies, apparently, by uh, Tyrion and Teclas in the very, very end. But, uh, like, the only other time he has shown up anywhere else, and at least uh, since uh, Tyrion and Teclas were born, is that he invaded Nagarond, uh, the Malekith's capital, once. Um, but other than that, like he, he gets around, <laughs> uh, or sorry, he does not get around. He's, he is a very attentive lover, so to speak. So, uh, him being an Ulthuan, I think is absolutely perfect, but yeah, that's all the characters. Uh, like I said, I'm extremely excited for this. I'm really glad that they don't seem to be holding back on placing characters in really exotic places and really allowing us to experience the full breadth of the world. I mean, just with this image alone, um, we have almost a full scatter across the planet. Um, it's it's interesting to see Kairos brought away from Grand Cathay. Personally, I think this is a, is a more suitable starting fight for him, especially because he's the only demon character that's close to the Chaos Waste. But uh, I, I am very curious who, who Cathay is going to have as kind of their primary opponent. Um over here but uh because you you imagine they're gonna have some pretty nasty baddies but uh yeah that's gonna be it for me uh i hope you all enjoyed this video let me know what y'all think of the start positions down below is there any characters that you're really really excited to learn about um what do you think they're gonna do with bellicor i i'm really excited to see what they're doing gonna do with bellicor i i will say i am prepared to be disappointed with bellicor but I'm also very excited to see Bellicor. Because like I said, I really do want him to be the second Demons of Chaos character. I think he would be perfect for that. Um, but at the same time, the Demons of Chaos are missing a lot of features. Um, like, you know, they don't have a tech tree. They don't have all this stuff. And it would probably be a lot of work to create that for him. Um, so maybe they'll do something different. But, you know, I have my hopes. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. That's going to be it for me today. Um, at least for now. And, uh, yeah, last thing is if you haven't already, if you're someone that, um, is supports me on Patreon, which if you do, I really appreciate and love your face. Um, be sure to drop by because I actually put up something really, really cool. Um, there's a bunch of projects that are actually coming to fruition and as things finish, I am throwing them up on there so y'all can get early access and check them out. Let me know what you think. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today and I'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.